Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I'm going to show you how to know what gears are in your car or what gear ratio you have. And so there is a, there's several ways to do it. I'll show you some with the differential cover open. And uh, today here, I'm going to show you how to do it by spinning the tire and counting the revolutions of the drive shaft. So the first thing you need to do is put the rear of the car in the air. And so what I like to do is lift right about here. And uh, that's nice if you have the subframe connectors. And then you can put the jack stand either on the torque box, and I'm actually going to move it over here to the subframe connector in the back, same area. So then you just need to go around and do this on the other side. And keep in mind the car will roll now because uh, the rear wheels are not on the ground. And uh, that's where the emergency brake and the gears would uh, keep the car from rolling. So make sure that the car does not roll. In fact, you're going to want to put uh, wheel chocks under it. Uh, just like this, even a nice bag of salt is going to keep it from going anywhere, so that works. And uh, then just make sure that your wheels are slightly off the ground. Uh, next, you're going to go inside the car and you're going to put it into neutral, whether it's automatic or manual transmission, and now release the handbrake. After that, you're going to get underneath the car. And uh, what we're going to do is put a mark on the very bottom of the drive shaft flange here. So it's right at the very, very bottom. And then we're going to come over to the wheel, and at the very bottom of the wheel, we're going to put another mark. And so we're going to start off like that with a mark on each of these at the very bottom. Okay, so we have our line right here at the very bottom of the tire, and we have our line right here at the very bottom of the drive shaft. So we're going to rotate the wheel one full revolution and count how many times the drive shaft spins. So it, kind of, it helps if you have another person, but you can do this alone if you want like this. So here we go. One. Two. Three. Okay, here comes our line right here. There's four, okay, and we just have a little ways to go here to, to get it to that uh, full rotation. So we're gonna go four, and then right about there. Right right about there is where we started again. So now we just need to know the, the extra from here to the very bottom. Okay, so that's where our mark ended up. We just need to measure pretty much from here to the very bottom and find out how much of a turn this is, whether it's a, a quarter of a turn, a tenth of a turn, and then that'll be a part of our equation here. Now, if you want, you can just estimate. So that was four revolutions and about a tenth of a turn, and I know this car has four tenths. Uh, if you want to be more precise, you can take a piece of string or a wire like this and get one that uh, is the exact length of the diameter here of our flange. And next you'll just mark the difference here. So this is where the line ended up compared to where it should have ended. And then finally you can just measure that distance compared to the entire length and see how much of a full turn you were off by. So this one came out to full four revolutions and then about another tenth. So that would be four ten gears. If I had turned it and it only went around three and a half and maybe a little bit more, that'd be 355s, which is what the car came with the stock. And uh, I know the car has 410s because I've installed them myself. So anyway, uh, I'll put a video to the how to install gears as well if you want to check the video description. Okay, next put the car back into gear. Pull the e-brake. Okay, so now lift and remove that uh, jack stand. Make sure nothing's underneath the car. Come around and do it to the other side. Okay, now we removed our wheel chuck, removed this jack stand after lifting up here, and now we're just letting it back down. Now the next method involves removing the rear cover and looking at the ring gear and pinion teeth. And so I have a video on removing the rear cover and changing the fluid, and I'll put the link to that in the description as well in case you're wanting to do that. But it's pretty simple once you get the cover off. Uh, you'll remove it and the fluid will obviously come out here and uh, then once the cover is removed you'll be able to see the ring gear and the pinion gear that are inside. So sometimes the gear ratio is stamped into the back of the pinion so in this case you can see it says 327 
This was on our 98 Cobra. So if you can't find the number stamped in the back, you can count the number of teeth that are on the ring gear, and then you can count the number of teeth on the pinion, and you're gonna divide them against each other. So you'll count these teeth here, which are the ring gear. Next, you'll count how many teeth are on the pinion, which is this one right here. And so then you'll just count them all up and go ring gear teeth, and take that number and divide it by the pinion gear teeth. Now keep in mind there are things that will change your gear ratio, or the final ratio in the end, including a bigger set of wheels. So I remember when I had my V6 Mustang, I got these big 17 by 9 Cobra R's, which were much bigger than the 15 by 7s I think they were. And so uh, going to a bigger tire was the equivalent of uh, changing the gear ratio. So for example, if my Mach 1 has 410s and I were to do the similar thing and go to a bigger tire, then uh, it would drop it down to a 373 or a 355 back to where I was. And then the opposite would be true. If you went to a smaller wheel, it could uh, change your gear ratio towards the other way. So you could literally go from a 373 up to a 410 if you went to a really small rear tire. And if you're doing any of this, you do need to correct the speedometer because uh, it's going to read differently as that's measured from the transmission. Now using a handheld tuner, you can correct your speedometer, and I'll show you my video on that. It, you can choose which gears you have in it, and then you can even fine tune it by changing some tire sizes around just to get it right if you have a different size tire than stock. Now sometimes that's not exactly the case, like with my Yukon Denali. When I bought it, it had 22 inch wheels, but if you looked at them, they had a very small profile for the actual tire. So when I went to my 18 inch wheels, they had a bigger sidewall and so the tire was actually the exact same height from bottom to top as the 22 inch with the lower profile. And so companies will do this so they don't have to change specifications on a lot of things. And so in the end I didn't have to change anything with my speedometer or anything because both of the wheels were the same size in the end. And there is a calculator you can use and I'll put the link to this in the description. And you can put in the sizes and see how much bigger the wheel is if any over the other. I also have a video showing a whole bunch of information on the tire and I'll put that in the description as well. So thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And uh, so this is how you can simply find out what gears you have in your car. Uh, thanks for watching guys.